All right, welcome to part one of Dissa Stigs. Whether you like them or not, they're a necessary evil for a lot of environments. All right, so I'm going to do this on a Windows 10 VM just to kind of make it easy on my end. You definitely don't have to do this. You can do this natively on your Windows machine, but I think it's always best practice to do it in a VM. So uh, bear with me while this uh, OVF, which is prepackaged from Microsoft, uh, loads up. Uh, really nice on Microsoft that they make a lot of development builds, makes uh, life easier. Granted, it is going to have an expiration date, but we're just going to use this for a quick example. So um, booting into this VM and apologies ahead of time. I didn't think to increase resources to this VM, so we're crunching on a single core here, but we'll get through this. And uh, we'll jump right in to Edge, the greatest browser of all time, uh, not, and jump into the Stigs up at this URL here. And we're gonna look at a couple things here. I wanna open up um, the SCAP menu here, um, honorable mention to group policy objects there. They come with the DOD Cyber Exchange has some pre-configured GPOs to help get your environment, you know, very, very close to full compliance. And we're also going to look here in the Stigs document library, and we're just going to grab Windows 10 for this VM. And you're going to see something interesting here. You're going to see two Windows 10 Stigs, a Stig and then a Stig benchmark. And they both have the same version uh, in Rev. So we're going to go into more detail what the difference is, but spoiler alert, basically uh, one is SCAP, and, which is the benchmark, and one is the manual checks. Manual checks are more comprehensive. Um, they're all the checks. And then um, SCAP content is just the automated parts of the checks. And here we went straight to the SCAP uh, library, and you can see that you just have that one thing. And I was showing you the uh, size is similar. Um, the size is the same in regards to STIG benchmark. And so what that means is, you know, there's, there's the SCAP protocol, which is checking for a lot of the checks that are automated, but not all the checks. And uh, we're also going to download the STIG viewer for Windows 64, but you'll notice that they make it for a lot of other operating systems as well. Um, and then we're also going to dip into the uh, SCC, which is the SCAP compliance checker. Now you're going to have to have uh, CAC access to download that. So depending on your business unit, your environment, um, your business might be granted this access to use this tool, but we're, we're going to go and review it. Um, thankfully I have access. So going to go down and, and notice that there's Red Hat and a lot of distros here. Um, thankfully you don't have to use OpenSCAP uh, anymore. You can use um, this, this native SEC tool in Red Hat and others, but we're downloading for Windows. So we'll get that going and um, get these things installed. So you see here, uh, we have a number of things downloaded now, um, benchmarks, uh, the SCAP benchmarks rather, the STIG, and uh, the Windows bundle for the SEC tool. And you might also see their unlocker. So if you subscribe, you won't miss out on part two where I actually go into the unlocker bundle. And that's a neat little tool that allows you to customize SCAP benchmarks for your specific information system or environment. So let's say a lot of the computer systems throughout your environment uh, all have the same um, deviations. You can make a custom uh, SCAP benchmark so that the the checks that fail that you have an authorized deviation for don't show up as red. And it just, it helps with that percentile and not chasing down things. So now we're installing SCC and you see that little pop up there. Um, kind of funny thing is if you're already compliant, you won't even have the choice to get past that. So uh, you might want, you know, obviously you want to do this to a machine that's not already set up. Um, that's not fully compliant, or you're going to have to make a GPO and move this machine for a little while uh, just to get past that to install these things. And then obviously don't forget to get rid of that GPO later. And so now it's installing, it's gonna hang up here for a little bit and kind of psych you out, but um, it'll, it'll sort itself out and um, complete. And once we're done, um, check out the PDF here real quick. Um, RTFM, it's got all the things. 
and um, even that unlocker that will be in um, part two. So again, shameless plug, please subscribe so you don't miss part two that goes into how to use the unlocker to make those custom SCAP uh, benchmarks for your environment. And now let's check out the STIG viewer. So STIG viewer is not so much an install, but just a file that runs. So you see the command prompt opens up and then here we go. You might need uh, JDK, I believe, for this to run. Um, it'll, it'll give you a warning if you don't have the right job installed. But we're going to go in and now load these benchmarks that we also downloaded as well. Benchmarks, plural, because I'm gonna show you how the SCAP benchmarks almost look like the full complete deal. And then we're also gonna upload these manual checks as well, the STIGs. And, and okay, so because it was unzipped, there's some other junk in there and it lets, lets you know that it didn't load everything. But it, it pulls it out and you'll see here, um, I, I select it and we're even gonna scroll down all the way to the bottom here and look at this Voln ID and be like, ah, see, you know, 230, 220. And now we'll go over to this um, uh, SCAP STIG um, benchmark and same Voln ID. So you think, oh, it's the same thing, right? This is redundant, it's just maybe a different version issue. But now let's make a checklist from one, which we're gonna do regardless, because when you do your manual checks or when you also plug in your uh, SCAP results, you're gonna make a, a checklist. So let's make a checklist for this other one as well. And if you noted that it was like 211, this is 285. So this is the manual checks. Here's the SCAP. <laughs> SCAP manual. And um, so you'll see that the manual checks have all the things. Um, and you'll see this manual XCCDF right here. Uh, so the thing is the STIG SCAP benchmark, key takeaway there is the SCAP part which is the security content automation protocol. This is the automated parts of the checks. So not every check is automated, and that could be for a number of reasons. Um, some checks are just gonna be inherently uh, uh, not, not able to automate, like make sure that system is in a locked uh, area with a restricted door access, you know, and you're not gonna be able to automate that check from within the Windows box. Um, and in some of the automated checks, there's just a little bit of lag between SCAP catching up to uh, the STIG. And you'll, as you update over time, you'll see how it catches up. But basically, key takeaway there is the difference. So now we're going in and looking at some of these checks. And for example, I'm checking out right here uh, the BIOS mode, and it doesn't match up to UFI here. So we're going to mark this as open. And you're gonna see how the color changed. And you see those two above ones while I was rambling on? I had made those not applicable. So we're gonna make a bunch more opens so you can see on this pie chart how it starts to populate. And typically, I guess some environments that definitely don't have uh, availability of SCC, you're gonna run through those manually. And I'll give a little shout out to another YouTube video where someone is um, showing how they use PowerShell to uh, automate some of those chicks, checks. So uh, that's a cool little takeaway. And also if you're running Tenable, that's another great way to be able to automate these checks if you're already running um, that security tool. And with Tenable, you have a choice of using their natively built um, .audit files that are a bit more comprehensive, but you also have a choice to import um, these XCCDS or rather uh, these benchmarks and make it run those as well. So a lot of options out there. So I'm gonna mess around with trying to get rid of uh, some of these and I'll show you that it kind of works. We can get rid of this content that we don't care about and Oops, a little crash, we'll get back in there. But you'll see that it did get rid of those top ones, but um, we'll stop playing that game. But just a little demonstration that you know you can clean up your SEC and just leave there what you want. Um, so we're gonna select it as if we're just gonna run a scan for Windows 10. But remember, we also downloaded updated benchmarks that didn't ship out with this SEC build. So let's update, let's install the STIG SCAP and remember, SCAP, keyword here, uh, key acronym here is SCAP, which is the automated uh, protocol for the checks. So that's what you're loading in here, not the manual checks. It'll fail out if you try to load the manual checks. So now you notice that the version is newer here and the date's newer. So we have the latest uh, SCAP here. And you have the drop down. You have a lot of options here. These new ones are pretty exciting. 
um, down here is now they're starting to finally integrate this to uh, scan uh, Linux hosts. Um, you will need the plugin to be installed. And in my opinion, it's still in development. Um, I know there's a ticket in recently to uh, get some fixes done. It's not perfect yet, but it's nice to see that they're starting to build support for uh, Nix. But we're gonna do a Windows uh, local scan because we're just gonna scan this box right here. Let's kick it off. And for some people that have always been using Stig Viewer and running through this manually, um, you know, sorry to rub this in your face. Again, try to get your organization to have access to this uh, tool. Or again, if you have Tenable, um, you can also automate these checks with Tenable. At least the, like I was saying earlier, the checks that are possible to be automated. Obviously, you're not going to automate things like is this in a closed area with a, you know, a locked door, or, you know, so on and so forth. So it's gonna wrap up, it's gonna spit out with the paths where you can get the results, but also it gives you HTML results. So it's pretty neat. So you can have XACDF results that we're gonna ingest into Stig Viewer later, but you can also just go to view results and it, it spits out these uh, HTML results. And here's the like comprehensive results where it shows your passes and your fails. And you, you just click on those and it'll send you down to further details, which is down there. So it's pretty neat. And then we'll just go to the non-compliance one which just shows you all the fails. Um, so it saves you, you know, running through all of that. So there's this option, but I'm also gonna show you how to uh, ingest the SCC, uh, XCCDF results into um, Stig Viewer. So we're gonna go into Stig Viewer here and we already have the uh, manual um, benchmarks loaded in here. So now we're telling it to upload XCCDF results. We're gonna go to that path that it showed earlier and this is the default path. Again, subscribe. Um, in the later video, I'll show you how to go into the configuration settings um, and to customize the type of logs that come out and where they come out, which is great for uh, um, like seam ingestion. But here we go. Uh, we loaded up the automated results and you see all the green here are passes. So this is all stuff that passed. And you're gonna see in the part chart to the left, you have a lot of red and not reviewed. So not reviewed is, you know, maybe there's some permissions issues. Um, should have ran this as administrator. Also not reviewed are gonna be these manual checks like I was talking about earlier, that's not really easily automated. Some not reviews are gonna be because SCAP is still taking some time to catch up to it. Um, you're gonna see I clicked there on that red one, that's a cat one, which is why it's red and a fail. And then you have these uh, yellowish orange ones, which are uh, cat two failures. And now I'm gonna show you how you can just make that not a finding. Um, sometimes you'll go in and check settings and for whatever reason, the SCAP check failed, but the setting is correct on manual verification. So you'd um, select that as not a finding or, uh, or you might have some other compensating control and you can put that in the comments there. And another good reason to go into Unlocker later and make some custom SCAP benchmarks for your environment if you have a consistent uh, variation on all your systems. So um, we're gonna punch in some other dumb comments here. Um, bear with me on showing how this is uh, not applicable, which is really not the proper case here. Uh, these comments aren't matching what I meant to d demonstrate here, which is for not applicable, it might be because uh, this is only for a domain connected machine. And in this case, this is just a a single standalone machine. And so you might check it off as not applicable because uh, it, it's it's assuming that the machine is dom domain connected. So we're gonna close that out after that, that demonstration of going through um, all these views and using that status menu up there to change with not reviews and whatnot. And now we're gonna save it. We're gonna save it and it comes out as a .ckl file. And this way you can you know send it up your chain um, however your process is for people to review and sign off on these checks, or maybe even just to make like a golden standard, you can send this uh, CKL out file to your IA team and your, and your IT team um, to show them where systems should be, like what the expectation is, what, what um, not reviews are allowed and, and um, what not applicables and what are considered not findings and so on and so forth. So kind of a way to, send out to your team where your your benchmark should be. So thanks for the view. 
please comment below on any other details you'd like to see. And I'll try my best to answer or better yet, ensure to include it in the follow-up video. Um, speaking of which, subscribe to catch part two that goes over the configuration settings for log output, additional log outputs that help with troubleshooting and unlocker, and maybe even dip into the PowerShell backend to automate this.